Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Sophia if you're new here and if you are new, please consider subscribing. My husband and I are a military family who recently bought a house and moved from Scottsdale, Arizona to Washington, D.C. Come along with us as we decorate, organize, DIY, and deep clean this new house on a budget in the series from house to home. I've definitely been the most excited to do has been my son's nursery this wasn't really an option because we were moving in the mix of things so I kind of thought it was pointless to do it in our old house but in this house I really wanted to make it this cozy sanctuary for my little baby boy Roman we've already placed some of these bigger items like his crib his changing table the rug but now it's time to do the fun part so in this video you're gonna see three DIYs and a couple cute little hacks to make any room not just a nursery any room beautiful again for the first DIY, it's going to be to refurbish your old furniture. In my case, I found this old patio bench on the side of the road in Scottsdale, decided to throw it in my car. My husband thought I was absolutely crazy, but I saw a diamond in the rough with this one. And sure enough, I looked it up online. It's from Joss in Maine, and it's over $500 originally. So after I clean it off, the first step in restoring furniture, especially something like this, is going to be to use an electric sander. If you don't have an electric sander and you're using a smaller piece of furniture, I would say that's probably okay. But for something like this with all the spindles, all the twists, the turns, you need something that's heavy duty because my arms were ready to fall off even with an electric sander. So definitely I did go in with a handheld sander just for some of the trickier parts, but for the most part, that electric sander saved the day. Now that we're all sanded down, it looks pretty good. I got most of the primer and the paint off. Um, there's still a couple parts that I was not able to, but I do have some stain and some brown paint to kind of help disguise some of the parts I was not able to sand down completely. As you can see on the back here, there's just still some of that primer that I just could not sand off. So I have a little trick that I'm gonna show you guys a little bit later in the video, but right now I have to tighten the screws, add some wood filler to those cracks just to kind of make it one solid piece. And now I'm just taking this washcloth, just kind of wiping everything down so then that way it's a clean slate before I go into the staining and painting part. I'm using this wood stain by Verathane. It is in a special walnut, which is my favorite stain to use on wood products. Now I'm just kind of dabbing the old washcloth in the stain and then applying it evenly to the wood. I would say that stain is a lot more forgiving than paint and it's a lot quicker. So if you're in a rush for time versus painting something, I would say staining it might even be better. So after I had stained it and I got the desired effect, I stained it four times. There were still a couple like little spots that I had to go in with some brown spray paint. I'll link the one that I used here. You can get it off of Amazon just to kind of give it a more complete. I didn't want it to be too, too perfect, but I wanted it to be more complete looking. And I think I got that effect with that brown spray paint. And I mean, obviously it's not perfect, perfect. Like if I would have bought it straight from Joss and Maine, but it's still pretty darn good. And I'm super proud of myself for doing this because I have zero woodworking skills. Now that the paint and the stain have dried, it's time to bring it up to his room and it looks incredible in his room. It is so beautiful. Yes, it took me the entire afternoon. Yes, my arms were ready to fall off, but it looks so cute in his room. And I think it's a piece of furniture that can grow with him. I can see him being three years old, sitting on this bench, five years old, eight years old. And I think that that is the type of furniture you wanna keep in your home. Things that grow with your child, I think are incredible. For the second DIY, I promise it's a lot less labor intensive, but we're gonna make a cement planter. Everybody knows how expensive planters can be. I have this plastic one that I think came from Aldi's and so did those Clancy's pretzels that my husband loves so much. So I'm gonna make a cement planter using these two objects. 
I'm not like super familiar with concrete, so I just literally followed the instructions on this concrete mix bag to get the consistency that I've seen a couple people use on YouTube, which is more like a clay-like consistency. And I think the most important takeaway from concrete, because I think a lot of people when they do have like concrete fails, is they're not able to get the items out that they use to mold the concrete with. So I think sticking with products like plastic, things like cardboard, I think those things serve a lot better than any other materials. I initially tried using scissors to get this planter out of the big container and it just wasn't really working. So I decided to use my saw to kind of cut through because that plastic, I mean, it's cheap, but it's still plastic and it's thick. So this actually worked very well and took a lot less time. Had I been using scissors, this would have taken forever. Now I'm just taking my, again, electric sander, just kind of making that top a smooth surface. I did have some bubbling. I read that you should shake the concrete to make some of those bubbles dissipate, but lesson learned, I'll know for next time. And then I just had this old broken lamp that has just been sitting in the closet. So I'm just gonna take the shade out and flip the base upside down so it acts as like almost like a little pseudo plant stand. And I think it looks cute. In terms of like the baby proofing side, definitely once he starts really like walking around his room, right now all he does is sleep in his room. We play downstairs. So when that time comes, I'm gonna do a baby proofing without compromising aesthetic video. So stay tuned for that because obviously safety is number one, but right now it's just not really a problem yet. And in the meantime, we just get to enjoy this cute little planter his mommy and daddy made for him. So for the next DIY, I really wanted to try my hand at doing this really Pinterest worthy curtain canopy situation just to kind of disguise some of the stuff that's not necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing in his room. The only thing I have that's even remotely similar to the shape of the top of the canopy is this old Dollar Tree hamper that's just been sitting in the closet. The first thing I needed to do was cut off the basket weave part so I'm just left with that top round shape that the canopy really has. Now that the basket part's off, I'm just left with this top piece and I'm just gonna kinda go around and smooth some of those little edges. Not like anyone's gonna see them anyway, but still. So now I'm just cutting a slit right through the top of this so I can feed my curtains through. I'm just using these old curtains that have been sitting in our closet. I kind of wish they would have been a little bit lighter in color so they would go more with his room, but I still think they look pretty cute. I have only two panels, so I'm using what I got and I'm just feeding it through. So then that way it kind of fills that circle so you don't see any of that plastic part. So now that the curtains have all been fed through, it's time to use my hot glue gun and glue the part that I cut using like an overlapping method so then that way it really sticks well. And I needed a place to hang the canopy from so I'm just using this clear fishing wire that I've had for years and I'm just tying it around multiple times just to kind of give it a really secure hold. I did end up having to do one, so you see how this one's going up and down. I had to do one across as well just to kind of make an X shape so it was really secure on the top of the ceiling. And then I've had these fairy lights for years, but the cord is like so short, I can't do anything with it. So I thought, what better time than to use it for this little project? So I'm just feeding it through the inside of the curtain as well, just to kind of give it a really soft, gentle glow when it's hanging from the ceiling. And this was the finished result. I think it looks so whimsical, very cute. It adds a real texture to the wall because we didn't paint or do wallpaper or anything crazy like that. We literally took a Dollar Tree hamper, some old curtains, and turned it into a canopy. And I think that that is the takeaway from what I want you to take away from my videos is that just because you don't have that exact item, it doesn't mean you can't make it with things that you already have in your house. And now that his room is all put together, I just wanted to point out a couple little tips or quick hacks that I did do to make this room feel very whimsical and complete. 
One of the first things I think people notice when they would look at this room is the lights behind the curtains. And I think maybe people think this is a lot more complicated than it really is, but it's literally just my Christmas lights. I happen to have white threaded Christmas lights because we have a flocked Christmas tree. But if you had green lights and darker curtains, this would still work. I think that this really adds a warmth and a coziness, very Pinterest worthy vibe to his room. The next little tip or hack I have for you guys that's 100% free is to put things that are meaningful for you in frames that's something you can either print on the computer or that's been given to you. Obviously his little footprints they did in the hospital the day he was born. I thought they looked perfect in this frame and they completely make it like super personalized and also behind that I have the lyrics to the Portuguese song that I sing to him every night before he goes to bed also making it really unique and personalized for him. And this is how it turned out. It was 100% free for me because yes, I already had the stain and the brown spray paint and all those kinds of things, the basket, the fairy lights, the Christmas lights, but I'm trying to use things that I think a lot of people might already have. So I hope this gives you guys some inspiration because I know at home you're starting to maybe go a little stir crazy and think about all the things you could be buying right now, but maybe look around, take a deeper look at the things that you already have because I bet you you could make something great out of it. All right guys, that's all for today's video. I'd love to hear from you all, so if you had a favorite DIY this week, go ahead and drop me a comment below. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope everyone has a great week, and I'll see you all next Sunday. Bye.